Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in again. In the last episode, we went over, uh, well, we modified a little bit of how what, what data we're passing between activities, uh, how we're actually referencing this list between activities, and now made it static. And we introduced the application class, which is not super relevant for this tutorial, but it is good to cover and uh, very good for you to know uh, that it exists. So uh, today we're just going to go ahead and continue on with this uh, idea of you know communication and modifying the list in different areas uh, so we are going to go ahead and uh, add maybe a little heart icon to the bottom here uh, that will be in sync with this heart icon essentially um, so let's go ahead and no it's not in our activity main it is in our view holder um, layout file so we're going to go ahead and Let's put it up here. We're going to go ahead and use the app compat image view. We're going to use wrap content, wrap content. We're going to call this favorite image view. Constrain the bottom to the bottom of the parent and these, yep, yeah, the start to the start of the parent. Whoa. Start to the start of the parent. And let's provide, well, let's give it an item for now. Let's give it the outline. And it's like completely in the corner. So let's just go ahead and give it a little bit of margin for, let's say, 16 dp. And how does that look? Yeah, not bad. Um, not bad at all. You know, instead of actually guessing, though, it does look good but uh, it, it's a little off from here and it looks roughly centered there but we're just going to go ahead and modify it to make sure that it is centered so if we do bottom to bottom of the oh, it's not called the remorse it's just called the button and then if we do the constraint top to the top of that button and we constrain the start to the start of the title text view and then we remove the margin we will be 100% lined up here uh, vertically in this direction and horizontally we will be uh, within this, you know, uh, exactly in the middle of this vertical distance here. So if for whatever reason we were able to change margin top, we're gonna say, yeah, we wanna go 24 dp, that also moves this down with it as well. So it basically stays aligned and, uh, you know, just looks nice. So, um, just revert that back to 16. And then we need to go into our adapter, into our on bind, and we need to find, um, let's go ahead and say favorite image view. This is going to be in uh, compat image view. And favorite image view. Let me go ahead and say set uh, we're going to set our image resource to whatever we find. Uh, so if our soccer tile is favorited, we're going to say r.drawable favorite else r drawable favorite outline and then we're going to go ahead and just uh, assign that to a variable and then load that variable there or sorry load that resource there and then uh, we're also going to set on click listener and as I mentioned before we have a little bit we have an interface here that we can utilize so we're going to go ahead and say function on favorite clicked at a particular position. Yeah, that's all we need, I guess, for now. So then we can just say soccer tile interface on favorite with the adaptive position. All right, so again, we're going to go ahead and bubble up this um, interaction here to the uh, 
to, through the interface, which exists all the way at the um, uh, sorry, the main activity level, which is good, um, so that we can actually modify the data behind uh, what's you know we can modify the correct soccer tile that they're actually trying to do, um, and then we're also going to go ahead and. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll just tell the activity to, to redo everything. So uh, the activity is freaking out because it does not uh, implement a new method that we added here. So again, we're just going to do Control-I. We'll bring up this little menu. We will click uh, Enter, and now we have our function uh, defined for us there. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get our the soccer tile of interest. And at a particular position, and then what we're going to say is soccer tile dot is favorited equals not soccer tile is favorite, uh, which is just going to assign to that to that field the opposite of whatever it is assigned currently. So let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. Yikes! It doesn't look all that great, but whatever. Um, so we're clicking it, and if we go into this adapter here, and we actually, no, actually, we don't even need to go into the adapter. If we go all the way here, we can put a breakpoint because this is where the the code bubbles up to. And you can see that it's running and that it's actually working fine. Um, at the moment, is favorite is false, and then uh, if we click it again. It's going to tell us that if favorite is true. So we're modifying the data correctly, no problem. Um, but we're not updating this view here. And uh, if you remember from our earlier videos of uh, about the particular adapter, the recycler view discussion that we had that we kind of dove into, um, we call here the notify data set change on this uh, adapter so that it knows to, to rebuild itself. Um, so uh, we're going to do something similar here because we've modified the data at this particular position. So we want to rebind this view, and uh, you know, so that we can kind of see that oh, okay, it's it's now updated. Um, because I think yeah, I think that favorites it. And so if we learn more, yeah, it's favorited. And then if we click it again. And go back. It's unfavorited, right? So this is working. The, under the hood, it's actually functioning as it should. Uh, we just need to tell this one to to update. So again, we're going to go ahead and rip this uh, adapter to be um, something that we initialize later, and so that we can set it as a global uh, variable. So that then at this point we can tell it to rebind, and so we can do notify da data set changed. However, notify data set changed is going to rerun, uh, rebind, recreate, do everything for all of these views, and it's not that much. You know, we'd be able to handle it. There's only like six views or whatever the case is, but um, we can actually be a little bit or provide a little bit more intelligence to the system itself because we know exactly which item was selected. So because we have this position right here we can actually say notify item changed at a particular position. And what that's going to do is it's going to recreate, rebind just that one position. So it's slightly more, uh, okay. Um, I don't know why that didn't rebuild, but it's slightly more efficient. And you can actually see it kind of flickers a little bit, but instead of having the entire list flicker uh, because of that update, just this one, uh, item flickers, which makes a whole lot of sense. So uh, now you can get a high level view here of this item is selected or, or favorited and none of the other ones are. Um, this is really bugging me. I need to change that right now. That margin just looks horrendous. Uh, yeah, it looks a lot better. So, uh, yeah, 
So now you can get a high level view of which are your favorites. And then if we go into our Man City, it is not a favorite. But if we go into our Arsenal, it is a favorite. Voila. Um, and then the same would be true for Manchester United, but we're going to uncheck it and good. So, so now the UI is starting to look like it is uh, in, in connection with our um, the data behind the scenes. But we see Manchester United here not being uh, a favorite. We're going to learn more and say, yeah, you know what, it is a favorite now. And we're going to go ahead and go back. But this hasn't updated here. And when we scroll away and come back, it actually has been updated. Uh, because again, the data has been updated behind the scenes. The, the flag is set to true for this thing to be a favorite. If we learn more, it is a favorite. And let's say we unselect it and we go back, it's still selected. So there's a little bit of an issue here when we transition backwards. Um, but if we scroll off the screen and then we bring it back, that view has been recycled, that view has been rebound. And so this code runs again. And with that particular soccer tile that is in this case, no longer favorited, um, you know, we grab the correct icon, we set it, and then, you know, we have our on-click listener and whatnot. So this is going to bring in uh, a small discussion about uh, our lifecycle callbacks that I mentioned a while ago in our activity. And uh, so I want to show you guys something here. So um, we've talked about on create, it's been like this, you know, entry point into your, into your activity. And, and we really haven't talked to too much else about that. But uh, let me say, let me find the chart for you. Activity, lifecycle Android. Let's go to an image. This one looks pretty popular. Yes, so um, you can see here, this little diagram here shows a bunch of the lifecycle callbacks when they happen and when their counterparts happen. So we're gonna go ahead and say that our activity has been launched. Uh, so, you know, the application has been started or whatever um, on create runs and then on start and then on resume and then our activity is running. So there's actually three lifecycle callbacks that happen before uh, you as a user actually see the content on the screen. And then in the reverse, when we're leaving the activity, the on pause happens, the on stop happens, the on destroy happens, and then the activity is completely shut down. So we actually don't see this full life cycle in our main activity. We do, however, see this full life cycle in our activity in our, um, our secondary activity here, this, this, uh, this one. So when we click this button and we move to this screen, before we even see any of this stuff on the screen, on create, on start, and on resume all run. Uh, at different points, the system is doing different things. And then we get to the point where activity is running and you as a user can actually interact with the UI elements, do specific things, etc. Then when you're leaving the activity, the on pause, the on stop and the on destroy run. And so again, talked about a few videos ago that, you know, any of the stuff that's being done here wasn't being translated backwards. And that's because um, this activity, this club overview, this uh, soccer tile detail activity, was being created and destroyed every time we were viewing it. However, because we need to preserve the back stack and because uh, what the system tries to do, the this activity does not go through the on create uh, or does not go through this entire um, this entire life cycle. Uh, it, it only goes through a part of it. And uh, so it's, it's mainly because it needs to exist in the back stack. It exists in memory so that when you go backwards, uh, it exists there. And, you know, when you go backwards from here, uh, it knows where it is. You know, it stays here with Tottenham Spurs and, and or now let's say Liverpool's at the top. And so you go there and you come back and, and we're scrolled to the correct position. So things are being preserved and, and uh, you know, you've returned to a normal uh, or what you would expect as far as the um, the navigation that you you go through as a user through an application. 
So in the next video, we're going to go through and actually dive into a little bit more of this life cycle stuff. I'll actually hit some breakpoints. We'll see exactly what's happening. We'll see exactly what isn't happening. And we'll see exactly why this is favorited. And when we learn more and unfavored it and we go backwards, it's still favorited. Uh, we're kind of, you know, glitching here in the UI a tiny bit. But if you scroll off the screen and scroll back, it gets rebound and the data is correct. So we just need to hook into some of these lifecycle callbacks, understand what's going on, and uh, we can make the necessary changes that we need to. So uh, I will see you in the next one.